Number 38. Which of the subshells described in the previous question contain degenerate orbitals? And how many degenerate orbitals are in each? All right. So here I just put the question number 37. That's the one that they're referring to. We have already done 37. So if you guys want the answers to 37, just click the back button if you're on the playlist. We go into that. But just know that this is 3D. The answer to that was 3D. This one is the 1S. And this one is the 4F. Uh, okay. Now we just have to see if these subshells have degenerate orbitals. So what are degenerate orbitals? Degenerate in chemistry means the same energy. So if you have degenerate orbitals, you have orbitals that have the same energy values to them. So they're very, very similar. They're exactly the same, technically, in energy value. However, they are different in orientation. That's what makes them different. So the orbitals come from different orbi orientation, different ways of looking at them, orientation, but their energy values would be equivalent. Now, how are you going to find out these degenerate orbitals? Well, the key is in the word orbital. What quantum number is the orbital value? It's the ML. So for all of these, for A, B, and C, you have to find the ML value. So I'm just going to write here A, B, and C. Oh, gosh, A, B, and L. L is on my mind. You'll see in two seconds. So I'll put C over here. Now, I'm going to put up here, how do we find the ML? The ML is always taken from the L value, the angular momentum. It's always negative L all the way to positive L. Now, if you find out an ML value and you have more than one number, voila, you have degenerate orbitals, all right? Because you'll have that many orbitals, as many letters as you have, and they will all have the same energy amount. So let's get down to it. For A, they tell me that L was 2. So if we, they gave us an L of 2, we could find the ML by doing negative L all the way to positive L. So negative 2 all the way to positive 2. How many numbers are in between negative 2 and 2? You think of just a number line. Okay, well, I have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. You automatically have uh, five numbers, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are five different orbitals. Are they all degenerate? Yeah. So these are degenerate orbitals. Now I'm going to answer the second question. How many degenerate orbitals? Well, there's five different numbers. So for A, there's five degenerate orbitals. I'm just going to say 5DO. So yes, you do have degenerate orbitals because there's five different numbers for your ML and literally five numbers. So five degenerate orbitals. And just remember that the ML is just telling you the orientation. So there's technically five different ways to draw the subshell. Okay. B, they're telling you that L equals zero. So I'm just going to write that here, L equals zero. So if we want to find the ML, it's negative L to positive L. So it would be negative zero all the way to positive zero. Ugh. That doesn't really make any sense, right? From zero, from negative zero to positive zero, technically zero is not negative or positive. So this one would just be a zero. I only have one number. So can these be degenerate? No. So this is not degenerate orbitals, DO, because there's only one orbital. There's literally one number here. So there's only one orbital. That's it. So there's one way, there's one orientation that you could draw this subshell. Last but not least, L equals 3. So L equals 3. ML is always negative L to positive L. So this would be negative 3 all the way to positive 3. Hmm, okay. Negative 3 to positive 3. Let's see. Negative 3. Negative 2. Negative 1. 0. 1. 2. <laughs> and 3. Jeez. But there's more than one number, right? So just as long as you have more than one number, these, all these representations of the orbital would be degenerate. So yes, you would have degenerate orbitals, DO. 
How many degenerate orbitals would you have? Well, just as many numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in this case, you would have seven degenerate orbitals, D-O. Seven different orientations for that one subshell, a.k.a. seven different ways of drawing the subshell. Yeah? Okay, so that's it. Um, yeah, we pretty much went over it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. For a lot of students, electronic structure and electronic configuration and quantum numbers are one of the hardest topics. So I want to hear from you guys as to what you think. Um, yeah, as far as that, have an awesome day, guys. Study hard. Happy studying. I'll see you guys in the next question. Bye-bye.